Can I help you? Why, yes, yes, you can. I'm here to report a terrible crime. And what terrible crime is that? This one. Congratulations on an absolutely eye-popping, jaw-dropping, pop-art blast of an anti-hero <laughs> movie. Thank you. I loved it. <gasps> For those who are not in the know, can you please fill them in on exactly who Harley Quinn is and mm. what her emancipatory journey in Birds of Prey involved? Sure. Well, Harley Quinn is a comic book character. <laughs> um, and she first appeared as Joker's girlfriend in Batman the Animated Series. And... She just took on a life of her own, even in the comics. She became a fan favorite, and I think partially it's because she is both very vulnerable, but also extremely powerful and funny and different than anything else. And she had a weird, wicked sense of humor, and I think people really love her for that. And so after she was introduced as Joker's girlfriend, she went on and had her own series um, and became an anti-hero of sorts and out on her own without the Joker. And so that's what we do in this movie. She breaks up with the Joker at the beginning of the movie, and then the rest of it is her finding herself. It's oh so oh, quiet. Now that I cut ties with Mr. J, I'm about to learn that a lot of people You're want me dead. All alone. And at the top of that list is this guy. Margot Robbie, just a joyous, fierce energy, and she's also the producer. Yeah. So can you tell me about working with her and what she brings to the party? I mean, she brings <laughs> it all, you know? She really does. She's incredibly committed. I think the most committed actor I've ever worked with, and she's good at everything, and so, which is super fun as a director, because you're like, oh, you are gonna do the derby, and you are gonna skate on a moving carousel and fight men at the same time, and then on top of that, we're gonna have a very emotional scene between you and Doc, and you're going to you know, wow us with that. Um, and on top of that, she's an incredible producer. She really, really knows her stuff. And she, you know, has muscled and fought for this movie for, for many, many years. Yeah. yeah, she brings a real intelligence and integrity to the role, mm -hmm. even though it's comic book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it, yeah. Because yeah. one of the things I really loved about it was that I felt these women transcended gender. Mm -hmm. And and I wondered if that was part of what you wanted for the, the appeal to be way beyond just girls. I think that was really important for all of us because mm. in our daily lives, like, you know, I have a very supportive husband and many guy friends and there was no reason that I think a movie with predominantly women characters shouldn't be enjoyed by men. And I think you know, and Margot's spoken about this too, of trying to create a, a different world and aesthetic and energy to it so that it doesn't feel necessarily like a chick flick. Um, and the R rating and, you know, the toughness of it. And I, I love what you said about transcending gender, you know, and gender cliches on top of that. Because um, they're, you know, these are just cool, interesting, strong characters, whether they happen to be male or female. What? You are so cool. The fight scenes, I mean, what incredible choreography. Can Thank you. Tell you. Me, oh, I just, I loved every second of them. Tell me about your influences and also Margot's input. Sure. <laughs> well, I wanted to make it feel grounded and real for the most part. And that was important to me because I wanted to convey or show these women actually like being really powerful and strong and the physicality of these women. And so much of the world was playing around with these two extremes of keeping it very grounded and gritty, but at the same time having these like pops of color and exuberance and fantastical elements and that's what the world is and that's what Harley is and that's what her mind would be and the, the Gotham that we created. The choreography, you know, the, the practicality of it was something I've always loved um, and I spoke a lot about with Jonathan Eusebio, our stunt coordinator, and we were both big fans of like early Hong Kong, um, like Jackie Chan movies and the way that he would just do all his own stunts and it was all practical and that was a big, um, that was something I really wanted in the movie, was to keep it very practical. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. 
Are we ready? You blow up! How are you changed when you do a film like this, both professionally and personally? <laughs> when, you know, it's such a great opportunity to get your hands on a DC film. Sure. Yeah, and to work with such great writers and great producers and women, you know. Yeah. yeah tell me about your journey. Absolutely. I, I definitely think that I, um, I felt very much connected to the material and to the story that they're trying to tell, which is like, you know, women alone um, finding strength in each other and and then therefore in themselves. And I think that we all have so much self-doubt and as a female director and a woman of color, I definitely had plenty of that. And I went from making a small Sundance movie to doing this and I think being able to do it at all, to be given the opportunity to do it was huge and really a boost of confidence and really a way to emancipate myself from some of the self-doubt um, and this imposter syndrome that I think we are all privy to, you know, that we all get. Um, and I think all the women in this movie emancipate themselves from a, a little bit of that because sometimes we're, our, we're definitely our own worst enemies, <laughs> at least half the time. Um, and if someone like, you know, Black Canary, like, spends most of the movie not being able to f find that power and have her voice and then suddenly she lets out this huge you know scream and then and, and, and all of that I think that's just a really great um, story to, to to commiserate with absolutely yeah. and what I felt when I left was just this surge of connection and power. Thank what do you, you hope people will take away when they've seen the film? I mean, I think that's really spot on. I would love that. I would love for people to have a good time. And then I think hopefully it's cathartic for, for some people as well. Um, and ultimately, I hope they fall in love with these characters, not because that they're particularly likable, but because they're real and they're engaging and they have something to say. When you fall in love. Oh shit, is that a hyena in a bathtub? I named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. <laughs> Thank you for watching Picture House Cinema's unique video content. Hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with our movie news, cast and crew interviews, highlights, trailers and lots more. 